everybody welcome back to three sisters homestead it has not rained for a month so today is our first rainy day in a month so we're going to be in the kitchen and we're going to make a new recipe for you guys we have this cookbook that i had gotten from a store where we got our um 40 pounds of chicken i think i showed you guys this a couple times now i picked out a couple different recipes that we wanted to try so we're going to be doing wedding chicken today we have a don't remember how many pounds of chicken this is it said the recipe calls for two pounds so we're gonna have to weigh this before and then we are going to use some ritz crackers we did get just generic brand on all of the stuff since it was just me for a recipe corn flakes This is just the off-brand Bisquick. Some butter. Salt and pepper. Garlic powder. Paprika. And it calls for nature's seasoning, seasoning salt. But I already have Lowry's seasoning salt. Shaking real good. And the only difference between Nature's Seasoning and Lowry's is it has some celery seed and parsley in it. I don't have just parsley, so we're just going to use the Italian seasoning. We're out of our parsley, but we have more growing out there. That is about one pound. And that is one pound. Okay, good. So two pounds of chicken. This calls for two pounds of chicken tenders. These are chicken breasts. So I'm gonna cut these into strips and then we'll be back. Okay, so we have the chicken cut up into slices. So we're going to start on the, it's not batter, the, um, the crumble, the mixture for the chicken. First, we're going to take one sleeve of Ritz crackers and we want these to be finely crushed. Okay. I'm just gonna, Use this from my, um, what's it called? I Mortar <laughs> and pestle or whatever. I don't know what it's called. Okay, we have these pretty finely crushed. So I'm just going to dump them in here. I'm just setting them aside. Now we need three fourths cup cornflakes crushed. And that's a crushed amount, so I'm gonna do one cup not crushed. Stepping on them on the floor. Oops. Told you guys we're messy. Um, then I'm just gonna crush these up and we're gonna remeasure it and make sure that is three fourths cup. And if it's not, we'll do some more. We have this crushed, so now we are just going to put it in here and make sure that it is enough. It looks like that is about, nope, about half a cup. So I'm going to do one more cup in here and then it'll equal. Or I guess I don't need to do a full cup, maybe about three fourths. Because this was supposed to be three fourths cup? Yeah. Yep. Crush this up and we'll be back. All right, there's another fourth, so we're just gonna dump that on in as well. And now it calls for half a cup of Bisquick. Mm, a little bit too much. Okay, so we're gonna mix all of these together then. So half a cup of the Bisquick, and then the corn flakes and the Ritz crackers. Then it says add the seasonings. So we need a fourth a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of garlic, half a teaspoon of nature's seasoning. So let's 
do a fourth of this, some Lowry's. And we'll do just a little sprinkle, maybe eighth of a teaspoon of some celery seed, and a fourth a teaspoon of the Italian seasoning, which would be parsley, if I had it. But we're just substituting that. It also says to season with salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna put that in here instead of putting it like on top of the chicken when it's done. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not dumping the rest of this pepper in there then. I accidentally overfilled it, but we dumped the rest of it back in there. And then salt, I'm not sure how much salt we should put in. We've never made this before. Let's do it slowly. Put a fourth a teaspoon. Because that Lowry is, is pretty salty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then Cheyenne, while we were crushing up the um, Ritz in the cornflakes, she said she kind of wanted these to be spicy. So we're going to make this spicy instead of just plain. Um, we're going to put in some of this Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning. Just the fourth, but I'm going to put half a teaspoon. So we're going to do two scoops of this. But I don't think that that will even make it very spicy. Maybe we'll do three. <laughs> hey, we like things spicy when we make it spicy, so. And that is all the seasonings. So now we're going to mix this all together. That is a little crumbly. This kitten is under my feet. Watch out, baby kitty. So if you want it to be um, less crumbly than this, just crush it up more, but I'm okay with it being like this, so. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like we should taste it. Just grab a little pinch. Okay. That could use some more seasonings. It's a good start, though. Good, good base, good start, but I think it needs a little, a little bit of more of everything. A little bit more Lowry's, probably another fourth a teaspoon. I think I'm going to do a fourth a teaspoon of everything except for salt. Yeah. Maybe at the end we might need more, but... But I think it's good right on now. the salt, really, because of the crackers are salted. Nope, that's the celery seed. Let me not put too much of that. I'm just eyeballing this. And we might as well have dumped that pepper in here. This is the paprika. Okay, a little bit more of this Cajun. I think this could actually do with a lot more Cajun. Mm -hmm. If we want it to be spicy. <laughs> That's gonna be so good. <laughs> okay. Give this another mix. I will have the original recipe in the description and I will put that down there as well, how much we Put in additionally we're gonna add a little bit of cayenne as well to give it more heat the cajun has good flavor but it needs a little bit more heat Oop, it's caked there we go that's what happens when you use a silver steaming pot we need half a cup of melted butter and we're going to use that to wet the chicken, basically. Um, we're just going to dip the chicken into the melted butter and then dip it into the crumbs and lay it on a cookie sheet. Instead of trying to measure out out of um, the country crock tub, I just pulled this out of the fridge. I'm just going to dump this in here. 
can throw it in the microwave for a minute. Okay, it says bake at 350 for one hour or until tender. So I'm gonna turn it on at 350 and let that preheat while we do this. And I'm actually going to put on some gloves. Okay, our butter is just in this coffee cup. So I'm just gonna take a piece of chicken, dip it in the butter. Um, bring the sheet over here with it. And then I'm just gonna take it and put it in the crumbs. Make sure it's good and coated. Right on there. I am going to finish this up off camera and we'll be back. Here is the last piece. This was, this two pounds was just enough to fill up this um, cookie sheet. And there is extra in here. So you could probably do another pound. And there's still some butter in here too. So I think I'm going to take this and kind of rub it over the top of these. But I am going to take some of the crumbles and put it where there's naked spots where it didn't stick very well. But this looks really good. This looks like it would be good, you know, just as tenders. Um, we're gonna make mashed potatoes. So we're gonna eat this with mashed potatoes, but this looks like it would be good as like a chicken sandwich too. Nice crispy chicken sandwich. So now, you guys heard the oven is preheated, so we are going to put this in there. Um, we're going to start with half an hour and see what it does since this is um, thinly sliced chicken. But the recipe says an hour, so we might have to do it for an hour. Alright, and we will be back to you guys at half an hour. Okay, so our timer's going off. I'm just going to turn that off. Have a look. Yes, our oven is a little dirty. It needs cleaned again, but that'll be for the next rainy day. And I am going to check the temperature of this if I can turn on my thermometer. You may as well get it out though, since you're gonna add another layer. So your meat needs to be, I believe it's 165, and this is up in the 180s. So these are done, but if you want them to be a little bit more crispy, leave it in longer. But I am going to put on some butter on the top. We'll get these out then, so I'm trying to do it over the hot oven. So I'm just going to put a little... Bit of butter on each one of these. That's just gonna give it a little bit more of that buttery flavor. And that's almost all of the butter. I have to melt a little bit more. This step is not in the recipe, but we're doing it. And we were talking about maybe we were going to put um, the rest of the breadcrumbs on here, or mixture crumbs, whatever. But I don't think it needs it. This stayed on there really well, it looks like. Then I'm going to put this back in the oven for about 15 more minutes. Shit. <laughs> Don't touch your oven. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to put that in there for about 15 more minutes so it gets a little bit more crispy. And then we'll be back. 
Okay, so it has been another 15 minutes, so it's been a total of 45 minutes. Making this look nice and golden brown. And they were at temp at half an hour, so I'm not gonna check the temp again because they're only have gotten hotter. And so that is what it looks like once it's done. And then over here, we just have one of these, um, what's it called, instant mashed potatoes. This is loaded baked potato. So we're gonna make those to go with it as our side. And I just put some hot water through the coffee pot. And we'll mix that up and make that, throw some butter in there. And we'll plate this up and show you guys that in just a minute. Okay. So I'm gonna cut a piece. So at least what it looks like on the inside. Yep. Okay, nice and done. Looks good and crispy. And I'm going to taste it. Mm. That is really good. That bite, I could taste the Lowry's. Mm hmm. Some of y'all might not like this. <laughs> I know some people don't like their food touching and whatnot, so. But I like to have a bite of my chicken and my potatoes at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think that turned out really good. Um, I usually use branch and some red hot. And I think that that is what I'm going to do with this. But I think that this could have used a little bit more cayenne. I mm -hmm. think the Cajun is it's spot on, I think. But if I wanted it to be a little bit more spicy, which I do, I would put the cayenne in there. Or maybe some red pepper flakes. But the Cajun flavoring is good on this. It just needs to be a little bit hotter. For my taste, but... I think that's perfect. All right, so that is it. Like I said, um, we will put the recipe, the original recipe from the book down in the description box below. And then I'll put next to it, like next to the ingredient, I'll put additionally, and then how much extra we put in there. So thank you guys for spending time with us in the kitchen today on this rainy day. Please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next video.